Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So with 2020 fast approaching, the Democrats are vamping up their election strategies. Whether it's the nominees making increasingly wild promises of open borders and radical climate change action to Nancy Pelosi making increasingly wild claims of impeaching Donald Trump, it is all happening in the United States political arena. So just what is happening? What is the latest scoop? Who said what about what and when? Who's been caught out in what lie? Who's had the latest hysterical rant? Well, in this video, I want to examine a few key recent happenings on the electoral landscape, some of which are kind of being overlooked by the mainstream media. So the first thing that I would really like to address involves none other than everyone's favorite fake Native American, Elizabeth Warren. Now, I do not have a lot of time for Elizabeth Warren. She is so far to the left on things like immigration and health care that no sensible person could possibly take her seriously. Her plan to abolish private health insurance entirely in favor of a single payer system is further to the left even than Australia, and we have quite an expansive Medicare for all system. Then of course there was that time she tried to appeal to the young by live streaming in the most god awfully awkward manner possible. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna get me um, a beer. Hey, Glover, my husband Bruce hey. is now in here. Um, you want a beer? No, I'll pass on the beer for now. You sure? Okay, okay. say hello to folks. Yes. So, hey. this is my sweetie. Hello. Um, he's, and oh, I'm crazy. Hello. I love you. I love you too. Hey. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Enjoy your beer. And then there was the time she tried to get woke by putting her pronouns in her Twitter bio. Anyway, Elizabeth's latest gaffe, shall we say, is a bit of a long-term one. In fact, it extends back to 2007. During her presidential campaign, Elizabeth has claimed a few times that back in 1971 she had been working as a special needs teacher for a year. But at the end of that year, when she was visibly pregnant, her boss apparently did not invite her back for a second year because of the pregnancy. She has claimed this in September at the Democratic Party presidential primary debate, saying, But at the end of that first year, I was visibly pregnant, and back in the day, that meant that the principal said to me, wished me luck, and hired someone else for the job. She made the same assertion in August at a town hall, saying, again, that at the end of that first year of teaching, the principal did what principals apparently did in those days, wished her luck, and hired someone else for the job. And she made this claim a third time in April at the National Action Network. Teaching special needs kids is a calling, but I finished the first year visibly pregnant, and back in those days, it meant you didn't get invited back. That's how it was. Sounds all very sad, doesn't it? How she, an aspiring school teacher who dreamed of influencing young minds for the rest of her life, was shunned by a sexist male principal, forcing her into domestic servitude until she picked herself up and went to law school. Now this would make her a feminist dream candidate. That is, if it were true. Footage has come to light recently of an interview Elizabeth did at the University of Berkeley in 2007, where she talks about that time in her life but gives a very different account. I worked, it was in a public school system, but I worked with the, the children with disabilities. And um, I did that for a year. And then that summer, uh, I, I actually didn't have the education courses, so I was on an emergency certificate, it was mm -hmm. called. And I went back to graduate school and took a couple of courses in education and said, I don't think this is going to work out for me. Mm. And I was pregnant with my first baby. So I had a baby uh, and stayed home for a couple of years. In addition to the 2007 video, minutes from a 1970 meeting of New Jersey's Riverdale Board of Education have emerged, which show that Warren was unanimously approved for a second year contract in 1970 for a two days per week teaching job, which was similar to the one that she had held the previous year. Also, minutes from a meeting in 1971, the very next year, when she claimed to have been callously fired for her pregnancy, show her resignation was accepted with regret. Well, well, well. 
Either Elizabeth Warren is suffering from amnesia or she is the biggest gaslighter in politics. First she lies about having Native American ancestry allegedly to make it in academia, then she lies about the circumstances of her leaving the job that is a key personality draw in her campaign. That is, she was a special needs teacher whose dream was cruelly ripped from her because sexism and patriarchy. What a wonderful role model for women. Elizabeth has responded to this, stating in an exclusive interview with CBS, All I know is I was 22 years old, I was six months pregnant, and the job that I had been promised for the next year was going to someone else. The principal said they were going to hire someone else for my job. She also said, when asked why she told the story differently in 2007, that since her election to the Senate in 2012, she has opened up about certain aspects of her life, and that is one of them. Look, who knows what really happened. But the bottom line is, neither of her accounts supports the other one. Whether she fabricated the story in 2007 or 2019, this key point in her campaign has been fabricated either way. So, to Elizabeth Warren, once again, liar, liar, pants on fire. There is a rumor floating around that former presidential candidate and world's sorest loser, Hillary Clinton, will once again run for president. This speculation has been fueled by the fact Hillary has made a number of public appearances lately, sparked by her recent tour for her book, The Book of Gutsy Women, which she co-authored with her daughter Chelsea. Then, of course, there were these tweets. I think that crooked Hillary Clinton should enter the race to try and steal it away from uber-left Elizabeth Warren. Only one condition. The crooked one must explain all of her high crimes and misdemeanors, including how and why she deleted 33,000 emails after getting C subpoena. Don't tempt me. Do your job. Can I just say, while well, we're still on the green screen, Hillary Clinton should never, ever, ever try to out-Trump Trump on Twitter. Ever. So why would a few public appearances and a tweet or two mean a potential 2020 run? Well, it's the nature of her commentary that has people buzzed. So buzzed that polling company Rasmussen conducted a hypothetical popularity poll of Hillary and Trump, which revealed that at the moment they are neck and neck with voters at 45% each almost exactly the same as the 2016 election. Eerie, right? So just what is the nature of this commentary that has political gossips chattering away? Well, it goes something like this. He knows he's an illegitimate president. He knows. He knows that there were a bunch of different reasons why the election turned out the way it did. And I take responsibility for those parts of it that I should. But, Jane, it was like applying for a job and getting 66 million letters of uh, recommendation and losing to a corrupt human tornado. Okay. Evidently, very little has changed since 2016. Hillary Clinton's refusal to accept the election results are characteristic of a very sinister attitude within the left. That is, that democracy is only legitimate and functional if their preferred candidates and causes are winning. We are seeing the same thing in the UK with Brexit, where an unhealthily large number of Remainers are calling for another referendum or suggesting that Brexit be cancelled altogether simply because they didn't get the result they wanted in 2016. This condemnation of the results of a legitimately fought and won election campaign as somehow illegitimate is probably one of the reasons so many people do not want Hillary Clinton to run again. As for me, I'd love her to run again. 2016 was such a fun year. I mean, who wouldn't want Trump v Hillary 2.0, am I right? Then, of course, there is the impeachment issue. Look, a lot of information has come out about it in the last week or so, way too much for me to go into in detail here. It actually needs its own video, I think, to do it justice. But it's important to remember two things. First, unlike when Bill Clinton was impeached, there is no single concrete thing that the Democrats can point to that Trump did wrong. It all comes down to the interpretation of the phone call with the Ukrainian president and how you perceive that kind of conversation between world leaders. The other thing to remember that is in order for Trump to actually be removed from office, there would have to be a two-thirds supermajority in the Senate. Since the Republicans hold the majority in the Senate, it would seem 
highly unlikely the impeachment enthusiasts could achieve even a simple majority of over 50%, let alone two thirds. So this whole thing is just political theater and virtue signaling and serves only to distract from the campaigns of the 2020 Democratic presidential candidates. Which is why I am so confused as to why Nancy Pelosi has brought this forward in the first place. Like, what is she hoping to achieve from it in terms of the party? Unless, of course, she simply wants Trump's 2020 campaign to be marred by the shadow of impeachment because she has so little faith in her 2020 Democratic candidates to win on their own merits. Now that, I think, is a fair assumption. I mean, let's be real, they're not great candidates, to say the least. And speaking of saying the least, Okay, Marion Wibble- Okay, Marion William- Okay, Marion William- Williamson, I cannot even say her name properly. Marion Williamson, like, what even is that? She is weird with the crystals, and she's got the kind of author-creative thing going, and that's fine, but she is very clearly a hippie, and the last thing we want is for a hippie to be the leader of the free world. And then there's Castro, I mean, and I keep wanting to call him Fidel Castro, and obviously that is not his name. I mean, he must be one of the most self-righteous, open borders people you can possibly imagine, because if you know what he did the other day, he literally led a bunch of asylum seekers from beyond the border in Mexico to the US border and demanded they be let in while they await their claims of asylum, and of course, they were refused because of the kind of stay in Mexico policy. But of course, Castro was like, oh my God, it's so cruel. They're being left there to face the consequences. And it's like, oh my God, will you stop with the publicity stunt? It is so obvious you don't actually care about these people. You're just doing it to sort of whinge. And then there's Beto O'Rourke. Like, what is that? Like, he's like a piece of performance art that is put there to be a parody of himself. He's way too thin. He looks like he's like been drawn like that, God bless him. And I don't mean to appear and shame him, but I, I find it very, very off-putting. He's like, look at me, I'm so relatable. I say the word, heck yeah. I swear sometimes I said the F-bomb a lot in my speech when I lost to Cruz, la 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 la. And then there was the time that he tried to out Spanish Cory and Castro, Cory Booker that is, at the presidential debate. I mean, that was hilarious. He Remember he stood there, he stood there and like randomly talked in Spanish, blah, 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 blah. And they showed this shot of Cory Booker who was looking at Beto like he wanted to kill him. Cada votante necesitamos, necesitamos, necesitamos because they were each kind of try, trying to like out minority each other, which I think is incredibly patronizing. And the really ridiculous thing about it is that Beto O'Rourke, I mean, for God's sake, his last name is O'Rourke. He is a fourth generation Irish American who eventually went to an all male boarding school in Madison County, Virginia. There is absolutely nothing Hispanic about him. And as for Cory Booker, who then launched in and jumped into Spanish, his full name is Cory Anthony Booker. His parents have the most Anglo sounding names you can imagine, and he grew up in a black Methodist church. Hispanics are generally Catholic. And look, I'm not saying that non-Hispanic people can't be fluent in Spanish and shouldn't speak Spanish, etc., etc., so don't make that assumption. I'm just saying on a grand scale of virtue signaling within this context, what Beto and Corey are doing is just laughable and so transparent. And speaking of Corey, like, again, he's another one. All he seems to do is race bait and get hysterical. It's race, 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 race. Trump is this. Trump is that. Trump hates everyone. It's like, I'm sorry, but your obsession with race is racist in itself. And that's the same with all those kind of race baiting Democrats. It's like anyone who is, like, into sort of racially dividing people has to be inherently racist because that is actually a racist thing. And speaking of race baiters, like, do not even get me started on Kamala Harris. I think she is probably my least favorite of all of these really terrible candidates. I mean, my introduction to Kamala Harris was during the Kavanaugh hearings last year. Like that time she waited when she was questioning Kavanaugh in the Senate till the very, 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 very last minute of her five minutes or whatever time to say, look, just before we wrap up, um, you know, uh, did you watch Christine Blasey Ford's uh, speech this morning, her testimony? And of course Kavanaugh was like, well, no, I didn't. I was preparing my own. She's like, that's all. And he's like, but I was, I was preparing my own. No, 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 that's all. And I'm like, the reason you have done this is, is to try to paint him as some sort of misogynist who's not going to watch the testimony of this of this woman who's brought these allegations against him. That is in complete bad faith. So yeah, I don't like Kamala Harris. I think she's a bad faith actor and I don't like her. And then there's Biden. Joe Biden. Here's what astounds me about Joe Biden. 
he, how can the Democrats, who are allegedly the party of Me Too and respect for women and anti-predators against women, have a known lech who has been very disrespectful of women's personal space, invading their personal space in a very creepy way, which is behavior that they apparently roundly condemn, how is he a Democratic candidate for president and one of the front runners in the polls. I mean, oh my God, if you wanted an example of how hypocritical the regressive left is, this is it. They are so tolerant of bad behavior on their own side. It is like laughable. So there's my, I guess what you call US election special. I'll keep you updated on all the kind of little tidbits like that that are coming along that maybe the mainstream media is not reporting on. And look, I think all I can say is that 2020 is around the corner and it's going to be a bumpy ride. If you like that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Mm -hmm.